All right, got a fun video for you here today because I'm going to go over three different products. And the first one is Complete Now. And as many of you know, I'm not a huge fan of subscription services. And the truth is, I think subscriptions are great for a certain market. And that market is who Native Instruments is kind of pushing this towards right now. They are pushing it towards those who are just getting into this stuff and want to try out the Native Instruments world and use some of their products for 10 bucks a month because they can't afford one of the higher up versions of Complete. So I think it's perfect for that. But the danger here, of course, is that in the future, things become subscription only. Hopefully they don't go this route. And I think if we all voice our opinions at this point, I think Native Instruments is really open to suggestions. If you go to the forums, you're going to find that they're like, tell us, what do you want? What do you want from this service? I will do future videos where I get into the software. I've got a recent video on battery and a recent video on Massive X. So really getting into those two pieces of software that you're going to get with Complete Now. So make sure you go back to those two videos, check out that software, and I'll have stuff coming up in the future on the different things that get released as it comes out, because I think this is perfect for, you know, my nephew who just wants to be like his cool uncle who makes music, or at least I think he thinks I'm cool. Probably does. Anyways, let's get into the next one. Next one we're going to talk about is the baseline generator that comes from Propeller, not Propeller, it's Reason Studios. And one of the things that separates Reason from all the other programs is their player instruments. And so this new thing that just came out is a player, well, a player device, I guess is more what it should be called. And so this is a player device that will generate bass lines for you. So we'll go have a quick look at it, play around with it a little and see who that one is designed for. We're going to look at it inside Cubase so you can see what it looks like running inside another DAW. Last thing to mention, I'm working on the new MacBook Pro. I got a 16 inch and this thing is almost maxed out. So I'm going to do a video on this comparing it to a 2016 MacBook Pro to see how virtual instruments are running. And that's something we're not, we haven't seen a lot of videos on YouTube about. And I want it to be a comparison between an old computer. I am loving it already. I got to say, I've never used a MacBook Pro as my main computer. I've always had some kind of tower and this is kind of changing things for me in a really great way. There are some hangups with it, of course, but I'll get into that in the next video. So stay tuned in the next week or so for a video like that. Okay, so here we are in Cubase and you can see I've got the Reason Rack plugin loaded up on a track. Let's go over to Instruments and we'll go to Europa. Let's go to Bass Patches and see if we can find a good bass patch. <laughs> All right, that's a fun patch. Let's go with that one. And then let's go over to players and we're going to drop a baseline generator right on top of that guy. Okay, so here we have a little pattern going and let's set our tempo to something like, uh, let's go 105. And we hit the run button to hear it. And so these devices, in my opinion, are kind of like, song starter ideas potentially. So you could use this thing to create bass lines. They are definitely geared towards people who don't have a lot of music training. So if you don't know how to come up with a bass line, this kind of thing could be really beneficial to you. And of course, we don't want people just using software to write songs. You might as well be using Band in a Box or something like that. But you can also learn a ton from the things that they have in this. And the things that you have to understand about a player like this is it's loaded with basically MIDI files of potential bass lines that would make sense. And so it works with notes that are on the beat and notes that are off the beat. So you see on the left hand side, we have on the beat on the right hand side, we have off the beat. So as I move down, we get more complex on the beat notes. And you can see those as these, these green notes that are happening here. And then we have off beat notes that are happening in between. And as I drag the complexity this way, we get more complex off the beat pattern. So if I press play now, so if I drag this all the way to the top, now it's going to be mostly just on beat stuff. So what you've got there is basically eighth notes that are happening. So on, on beat, 
is actually on eighth notes. Off beats are going to be the sixteenth notes. Because if I'm going this fast, you can see da, da, that's, those are eighth notes right at the beginning. And then we can see that you can tie notes over as well with this little button right here. Kind of reminds me of a sequencer in OmniSurf. And then if you want to add something else in, you can just add a little blip right at the bottom. And then you can choose this velocity thing to make it a softer note. So you can see if I go all the way down to the bottom, it's very quiet like this. All the way up to the top, it's filled in and it's louder. So if I go like this, I'll make it quiet. And then crank it all the way up. And then you can choose the note right here. So let's go up to uh, the fifth. So if we're a root note is a C. Next kinds of things we have are ways that we can adjust the velocity. So you can see that now nothing is changing when I when I move this, and that's because it's switched over to manual rhythm and manual pitch because I started playing around with it. So if I turn that off, and now I can go and start using this velocity thing. And as I push the velocity up, you can see everything gets louder. And then here we have some have more variation in the velocities or overall. And then we've got note length, so we can play around with the note length a little bit as well. And as you add note length, it just adds these ties to these offbeat notes. And let's go shorter. So now you get these percussive little bass lines. Next thing we've got is the variator, which, which adds some variation either to the on beat or the off beat. And if you crank that up, you're going to see this, what looks like a waveform. And you can see that these different shapes. And all it means is, if I have it on this one, it means for the first portion of our sequence, it's not going to do anything. But here we're going to, in this part, we're going to get more variation. If I do something like this, you're going to get nothing. And then the variation is going to amp up until it gets to the, some more variation to the very end. So now as I crank this up, now we get just interesting patterns that move along. So it's all about just randomly coming up with some patterns or accessing some internal MIDI files and changing these notes for you sort of on the fly. Really interesting concept. A lot of hit and miss kind of things that I do find with the other players like the drum map or beat map. So we've got a complex line here. And one thing that always bothers me about any kind of sequencer like this is when you come up with some kind of bass line, you can hear right off the bat, we've got a minor third in there, right? So if I'm in the key of F minor, that note has to be a third apart. If that note has to be a minor third apart, if we're going to stick on the, the root note of F, so it's a, a minor chord. So we have a minor third up. Okay, that makes sense. But what happens if we go to C sharp in the key of F minor? Well, now we've got a C sharp going up to an E. So it's a, a minor third, just like it's written in here with this little part. So that's not going to work if our song is in F minor and we just go to the C sharp. So, or the D flat, I guess you'd call it if you're in the key of F minor. But regardless, it it's not working. You, you've got wrong notes in there that don't fit in the chords or don't fit in the key of the song that you're in. So Reason is pretty smart. They realized they don't need to add this functionality to this player. So if you want that functionality, there's a really neat way to do it. You go over to players over here. So what you need to do is take a Reason player. I'm going to go to scales and chords and drop it right after the baseline generator. And we're going to switch the key down here to F minor. We're going to make it so that this whole pattern, no matter what it is, is going to get rounded off or maybe quantize the pitches really to the key of F minor, no matter which key we're on. So even if we play a wrong note, it's going to round it off to something that fits in the key of F minor. So you come up with a cool bass line. You go down to a scales and chords. You set it to the key of whatever song you're in. So in this case, F minor. We're going to make sure that chords is turned off because we just want single notes here. So there's our F minor do, do, going up. Now we go to, say, the C sharp. So it goes from a D flat to an E flat instead of a D flat to an E, which wouldn't actually fit in the key of F minor. So now we actually have a bass line that's stuck to the key that you are in. I could set the key to F major and watch what it's going to do with the keys.
So I just went to an F to a G, so I took out the minor third. You know, now it doesn't really matter where these positions are, they're gonna stay to the key that you're in, which is a really cool uh, setup. And it's a really unique way to use a, whole, a couple of their players at the same time. And I love that Reason is, is going this direction, coming up with these creative ways of generating sounds, but then also ways of combining them Maybe you should use a com combinator on this. Of course, that would make sense. Anyways, you get the idea. Really neat ecosystem that Reason Studios is building with the Reason Rack plugin. So that's the kind of stuff that I think is setting it apart from other programs out there. And I think if they keep going in this direction, they're going to have a piece of software that will work for all sorts of users inside different DAWs. Anyways, let's now have a look at Steinberg's newest lo-fi piano. It's free and I'm going to show you a tip that I think is really important for somebody checking this little thing out and I think it'd be a reason for anybody to check it out and I'm pretty sure all you have to do is go get the free Halion player and then you can download this lo-fi piano. It actually might even come with it, I'm not entirely sure. But here we go, let's go over to Halion Sonic SE and I'm going to click on my instrument sets and there's lo-fi piano right there. And so you can see we, it comes with a bunch of patches and let's try a couple of these out. We're going to double click on shopping mall. If I go over to edit, there we can see some of the parameters that we can play around with. Play with the flutter, just click on it and drag. So that's giving us that pitch warble. You can compress it more intensely or have it more dynamic. I kind of like that a little bit better. And then we get saturation. Nice. This is kind of a fun little Ooh, bit reduction. And I do like that the noise kind of fades out when it stops. All right, and then we got reverb. Let's crank that up. I'm just going to put a little drum kit in there. I'm going to load up a kit. Let's go to uh, Backyard Jams. Next thing I'm going to do is show you a really sweet feature of this lo-fi piano and it comes with a lot of Halion Sonic patches and that's these little chord pads that they have down here at the bottom. So if you're not a piano player or if you're using something like Machine, you can just bang these pads and it gives you an alternate way of generating chords. So if I click that pad right there, we get a nice little C minor chord. Really nice sounding chord voicings. So I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to go learn trigger note and I'm just going to go to this one right here. There we go. Now we get the chord and then learn trigger note. I'm just going to do this for all the other ones. Now we've got all these chords assigned. All right, let's play that in. Really nice voicings. It'd be great if we could pull the MIDI information out of that. But if we want to get into that kind of stuff, we need to go to the, the Cubase chord pad. So make sure you check that video and I'll go walk you through all of that kind of stuff because it's actually pretty incredible stuff and all part of Cubase. Anyways, there you go. A bunch of different things to look at today and I hope this gave you a good insight into them. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell if you're new here and we'll see you in the next video.